What do you do when you make a mistake? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Lawyers often tell their clients never to say they are sorry, lest it be taken as an acknowledgement of guilt and liability. During the sexual abuse crisis, Catholic bishops who followed this legal advice got in lots of trouble. Authority figures often fear admitting mistakes to avoid undermining their credibility. This is why many in the Roman Curia thought Pope John Paul II was crazy when as part of the celebration of two millennia of Christianity, he decided not only to celebrate the achievements of 2,000 years of Christianity, but also to ask for forgiveness for the sins of the Church during the same period. Such an admission, they thought, would weaken the authority of the Church. After all, if the Church made mistakes in the past, it could make mistakes in the future. So why should people follow it? Of course, the opposite happened. John Paul gained credibility and respect for his honesty. In his recent letter to Chilean bishops, Pope Francis has admitted he made grave errors in judgment in dealing with the sexual abuse crisis there. He had defended Bishop Juan Barros, who was accused of knowing about the abuse done by the Reverend Fernando Caradima but doing nothing about it. Francis said there was no proof. He even accused the bishop's accusers of calumny. Eventually, Francis did the right thing and sent Maltese Archbishop Charles Cicluna to investigate. Cicluna has a reputation for being a dogged investigator who follows the evidence. He's the one who got the goods from the Reverend Marshal Machiel, a sexual predator and founder of the Legionaries of Christ. I have made serious mistakes in the assessment and perception of the situation, he wrote. He said this was due to a lack of truthful and balanced information, but it was still his mistake. I ask forgiveness from all those I offended, he said, and I hope to be able to do so personally in the coming weeks in the meetings I will have with representatives of the people who were interviewed. Popes are not supposed to make mistakes, and if they do, the Church tends to wait decades, if not centuries, before admitting it. But Francis, from the beginning of his papacy, has admitted that he is a sinner like every other Christian. He made a mistake, corrected it, asked for forgiveness. That is what it means to be a Christian. In today's first reading, King Solomon, as the writer implies, meets his downfall because of his love for women, particularly foreign women. It is said that he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, which may be a literary exaggeration, but nonetheless leads to distancing himself from God. These foreign women led him to worship other gods. He built shrines for their gods. God punished him by giving his kingdom to one of his servants. He only left one tribe for one of his sons to rule and to ensure that the Davidic line will continue. But for the sake of David, God allowed Solomon to remain king until his death. In the end, Solomon's wisdom could not prevent him from being ruled by his heart and his greed for wealth and power. We too are often ruled by our own emotions and our liking for the pleasurable and perhaps sinful life. We profess to be Christians, but we can be quite mean, greedy, and remorseless when our interests are at stake. We can ignore integrity and be blind to the truth when they do not serve our own goals. Our piety may be shallow and takes a back seat when temptation and sin take a hold of us. Our prayers are self-directed to fulfilling our own needs and wants while we are bereft of charity for others. Our will shows its sweetness when we are overcome by our earthly desires. We may do good helping a lot of people, but oftentimes there is always an expectation of something in return. Or this may be our way to mask our own mistakes and failings. We may sweep under the rug that which will stain our image and our closet is full of skeletons that remain hidden till we expire. For our own failings to be altogether stopped, we must act today and do four things. For easy recall, we use the acronym RAPS or RAPS. R. Repentance for our sins. If we have wronged God and man, we must confess them to God and sincerely apologize to those we have trespassed. A. Atone for those mistakes by doing spiritual and corporal acts of mercy. We correct our mistakes by doing what is necessary to restore those whom we have hurt or transgressed. P. 
Pray to the Lord for His constant grace that it may accompany us throughout our life so that we will always choose holiness over haughty sin, integrity over impropriety, wisdom over whimsical acts. King David encouraged his son Solomon not just to practice sterile obedience to God, but to walk with God with all his heart and soul. Like him, we obtain this through God's grace. S. Step up our prayer life. We will always be faced with worldly lures that will tempt us to commit mistakes. But if we have a steady, constant, and focused prayer life, when we read the scriptures daily, when we receive the sacraments regularly, the will becomes stronger, the determination to be holy is strengthened, the transformation becomes permanent. And for this transformation to be sustained, we must surround ourselves with godly Christians whose lives and passion are for God. After all, we are but human and make mistakes. To judge others and condemn them for their mistakes is hypocrisy of the highest order. We sin and we say sorry. When someone sins against us, we accept them back. Otherwise, we may not have the strength to accept their wraths and face the wrath of God on Judgment Day. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, when I drift away from you because of mistakes that cause me to sin, grant me the grace to repent and atone for them. Deepen my prayer life. Make it constant and consistent so that I may never return to my abominable past. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.